As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing, Lord, we come to give you thanks for all. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom, forever we're changed. Because of your love. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Thank you, Lord. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks for all. of your love, our hearts are clean, for we lift you up with songs of freedom, forever we're changed, because of your love. People of God, good morning. We gather together in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Light, grace, and peace be with you all. When we're children and we're taught to pray, we are usually taught specific prayers that we, that we speak. And I think that sometimes we, we consider that exclusively in prayer. You know, that prayer is about talking to God. But prayer is also about listening to God. So I'm, I'm wondering as we come together, how much we're willing to listen to God in prayer or even to one another. When someone is speaking to you, do you find yourself distracted or preoccupied? Or are you willing to, to really listen to what the person next to you is trying to say? Do we listen? Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord.
bring understanding to the simple Lord I love your commands A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans Brothers and sisters we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you Lord. jesus said to his disciples the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down and put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. About a year before COVID, a childhood friend of mine got married in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I flew out for the wedding. It wasn't a Catholic ceremony. I wasn't the presider. I was uh, attending as a guest. And one of the interesting things about um, celibacy is that when you attend such an event, they tend to seat you at the singles table. <laughs> which can be quite confusing for the other singles, I have to say. <laughs> On this particular occasion, I sat next to a gentleman who I think gave me post-traumatic stress syndrome. He was a young man who had his own business and by his own estimation had been wildly successful. And throughout the course of this dinner, he was sharing with me the extent to which he had succeeded 
and he was telling me all about his business acumen and how astute he'd been in the marketplace and how much money he'd made and how clever he was. I, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of sitting next to such a person. I mean, it's, in a way, it's sort of intriguing in a horror movie kind of way, but he, he literally never stopped talking about himself. And when I would, when I would maybe try to take a break and maybe turn to the person on the other side of me, he would grab my arm so that I would be forced back into listening to his riveting dispatch. And then, and then like if you would have the temerity to maybe break away for a moment and maybe try to eat something, he would, he would grab your arm again. And then at one point when I started to say something to him, he picked up his phone. <laughs> I'm telling you everybody, in the course of this entire meal, he never asked me a single question. I don't think he even asked my name. I mean, I'm a relatively interesting person, okay? <laughs> I have an interesting job. I'm a Roman Catholic priest. Aren't you curious about that? Don't you wanna know what people say to me in confession? <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> I classify people like him into the category of um, the know-it-all. The know-it-all, the person who's been there, done that, they know everything, right? They have absolutely no interest whatsoever in acquiring any new information. They are there to impart knowledge. They are not there to receive any knowledge. And it feels like that, that way of thinking and being is, is becoming more pervasive in our society. And not just from adults, even, even I find it in young people. So here's what's happening now. You've got young people, they, they say to their parents, they don't wanna to go to church. I don't wanna to go to church, I don't wanna to go to church. So then the parent sends them to me as if I'm somehow gonna fix this, right? So the young person sits down and I say, why don't you wanna to go to church anymore? And they say, because I know it all already. I know everything about the stuff you talk about. I know everything about that. Jesus, life, death, and resurrection. I know it all. And I think, now that's interesting. I have two theological degrees, two masters in theology, and I don't know it all. But you, at the age of 13, possess the wisdom of the universe. That to me is just remarkable. And I think it is becoming more and more prevalent in the world that we inhabit. And it's that attitude, everybody, that I bring to you today because what struck me in this gospel is what Jesus says at the very end of the gospel. As I was preparing to preach to you, it was that one last bit that jumped out at me. So this gospel today begins with three very, very short parables or parabolettes, <laughs> okay? They're very brief, right? He talks about this man who finds a treasure in a field. He finds a merchant who has a, a, a pearl of great price, a fisherman who sorts the good fish from the bad fish, all right? So if I had to summarize what these parables are meant to communicate, it's this. He's saying that when you have faith, when you find faith, that it's very precious, like a treasure, like a pearl of great price, and you must hold on to it, you must protect it, you must treasure it as something of great value. And that with that faith comes certain moral and ethical responsibilities. And when you ignore those responsibilities, or even worse, abuse them, that at the end of your life, there will be an accounting so for us today, as you look at various different people around you, maybe people who identify themselves as Christian, who are living immoral or unethical lives, and you think it, it's bewildering, right? Because they're so successful and they seem to have everything they, they could desire. But what the parable is saying is, at the end, there will be an accounting. There will be a, a sorting, just as the fisherman sorts the good from the bad. So Jesus gives these little parables, right? And then he says to his disciples, do you understand what I'm saying? And they say, yes. And then he says, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. Every scribe who's been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. So what he's saying to them is, you possess this knowledge, right? You've learned certain things from being with me. And now I'm giving you something new for you to apply to that which you already know. The new 
and the old together. See, I have a theory, everybody. My theory is that there are many Christians who know that Jesus came from the Jewish tradition. They know that Jesus was uh, living within the Mosaic law, but that once Jesus comes into the world, it's almost as if the Jewish tradition and the Mosaic law are null and void, right? It's now exclusively about Christianity, but that's not true. Jesus comes into the world and he honors the Mosaic law. He has great respect for the Jewish tradition. He basically tries to bring new life into the Jewish tradition, to enlighten it, to give it another dimension. The old and the new together become that which is true about God, about life. That's what life is all about, it seems to me, is that acknowledgement that we possess a certain knowledge and we're always adding to it that which we know that which we're learning and together that's what we're meant to acquire so i think we need to be curious we need to be inquisitive we need to basically understand that every day is an opportunity for us to learn more we're learning things all the time if you open your, your mind and your heart to it. You're learning from, from pain. You're learning from success. You're learning from money. You're learning from relationship. You're learning from the passersby. Every single day of your life is an opportunity for you to glean more knowledge, more information. And with more knowledge and more information comes understanding. Isn't that a beautiful word? To understand. There are many ministers um, who, who preach in such a fashion. They say, uh, come to me, my children. Come to the mountaintop and learn from me. But that's not what I'm saying. That's not ever what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Come with me on a journey in which every day in which we are able to breathe and move upon the surface of the earth is an opportunity for us to grow in knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Come with me and understand that each day, there is the possibility of learning a little bit more about the wonder and the mystery of the God who lives amongst us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray that as the people of God, we might do all we can to not just praise and treasure the pearls of our faith, but to do even more to share them with everyone we meet for kindness and charity and mercy. We pray to the Lord. For peace and greater unity around the world, we pray that God might grant wisdom to our leaders, protect those who serve our communities, and console those longing for justice. We pray to the Lord. Hear 
for all those who find themselves searching for employment, for companionship, for peace in a wounded heart, that they might find their way to the God of infinite possibilities, the God of faith who bears all good things. We pray to the Lord. And for our parish family at Nativity of Our Lady, may we never lose that feeling of joy and wonder at finding what we have looked for. And with thanks to God for our faith and our friends and family, may we always be a people who cultivate optimism and hope. We pray to the Lord. For the gift of life, in a special way for Tyler Kaznuch and for all who celebrate their birthdays this day. We ask God to bless them with his love and friendship, that he might fill them with laughter and live deeply in their hearts, that they might be light, grace, and peace for others. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for all those in need of healing, I invite you to say their names aloud at this time. John, Pat, Sue, Joan, Mike. That through the healing power of the Holy Spirit, may all those who are ill be brought to the fullness of health and well being. We pray to the Lord. For all those who've gone before us to the kingdom of heaven, for Abby Violini and Flo Tartaglia, for our parents, our spouses, our children, our beloved friends, may all those who have died rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, may we be always willing to listen to one another, the neighbor, the stranger. May we be willing to listen to you. And may we see within the gift of each day an opportunity to meld the old with the new so that we might become more peaceful, less violent, more holy people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. As our gifts are being prepared for the altar, join us as we sing together, Open My Eyes, Lord.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through the Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Danny, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. It feels like such a tired cliche, but I, I am always surprised at how quickly time is moving. It's, uh, it's hard to believe that uh, this week will begin the month of August. Um, and it feels like, oh, blink my eyes, it'll be September. 
So uh, for those of you who are guests, um, you might not know that we here at Nativity of Our Lady have a very unusual way of celebrating our parish feast, which is um, around the 10th of, of September. And that is that on that weekend, we call it Jubilee Weekend. And so we cancel the, the 4 o'clock Mass on Saturday and the 8 o'clock Mass on Sunday, and we have one big Mass for the whole parish and any guests that like to join us in this pavilion that we erect off to the side. And we, um, we have a big celebration there for the whole parish, and then that's followed by a barbecue, and there's kind of a, a little um, silent auction in the, in the hall and all kinds of fun things going on. So it's a great, great day, and I hope that you'll, you'll mark it down on your calendars and plan to come and celebrate with us on, on that day. Now, the following weekend, which is actually going to be the 16th and 17th, we're going to keep the pavilion up, and we're going to have a ministry fair. So this is really an opportunity for everyone to kind of see all the ministries that are happening here at Nativity of Our Lady. It, it might be kind of a surprise to you to, to know that we, we have so many different things going on. And each one of the ministries has been tasked to provide food and drink. So as you go through the tables, it's like going to Costco and having all the samples as you go along. So, um, so there's going to be a competition. The one who has the best food and the one who has the most beautifully decorated table gets a prize. So I think the food is going to be really good. So I hope you'll come to the ministry fair as well as the Jubilee in September. Um, last week, Deacon Tom probably mentioned to you a little bit about the second collection mailing. So if you are registered here in the church, you actually would have received a mailing from us. Um, this all began because the the Diocese of Monterey that we are a part of mandates that there are certain sec coll second collections that we take throughout the year. And it just felt to me like, you know, it was like every other week practically we were putting out that basket. And I heard about a parish, I think it was in Wisconsin, that basically did it in one fell swoop. So that's what we do. We basically send out a letter and a kind of a, a worksheet, and it lists all the different uh, ministries that are the recipients of the second collection. And then you just write down how much you want to give to each one, you tally it at the end, and you write one check. Now, let's say you want to give to these organizations, but financially you're not prepared to do that in one fell swoop. That's fine. You can actually give a check to those organizations whenever you want. You just need to note it for us so that we know that's where you want it to go. But for those of you who would like to participate, if you wouldn't mind doing that and submitting that, that form to us by the end of August, we would be very grateful and then we can kind of kind of be done with that and wipe it, wipe it off our screen. Now, that would have gone out to everyone who's registered. If this is your parish, if you are coming here, then you need to be registered here. And by the way, that's the first thing we ask you when you call us, right? If you call us and you want to baptize a baby, if you want to get married here, if you want to have a funeral, whatever it is you want to do, the first thing we're going to ask you is, are you registered here? So if you're not, registered, and this is your parish, then I would encourage you to do so. You can do it online. You can call us. We'll do it with you over the phone, or we can send you the form. It's really, really easy. It only takes a minute, and it's really a fundamental way that we are able to communicate with you and that we know that you belong to us. So um, we have hospitality in the hall, everybody, so come in and have something to eat and drink before you head off on your busy San Luis Obispo Sunday. Let's stand and conclude our prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. All that we have seen, we will not hide away. We will hold it up. As the light of day, a lamp of mercy, and to guide and lead, carry to the least, we will show the world all that we have seen. We will go forth to serve the Lord, and we will love as never before. So God has set us free to proclaim to all of the world all that we have seen. All that we have heard we cannot keep within for the truth is the promise of the saving word of he who loved us first we will tell the world all that we have heard we will 
go forth to serve the Lord, and we will love as never before. The peace of God has set us free to proclaim to all of the world all that we have seen.